films, short films. Um, and I, I, it was kind of nice to, to see, you know, how they were done here, because I was from Oklahoma, and I just, I hadn't seen any professional film done um, until, like, the, the summer before I moved. It was, like, the first time. So, like, it was nice to, to be on the side of the actor, you know, in front of the camera to, to watch everyone, you know, moving around. But I found myself, like, like wanting to be the director, <laughs> you know, watching them and seeing what they were doing, and, like, oh, I would do it that way, I would do it that way. You know, I was just kind of more curious about that and um, and so that's sort of what like you know made me realize like I wanna I wanna make my own content. I wanna write and direct and you know and be on behind the camera. <laughs> Sheridan, so you now in, in that vein to create a, you know Liz is saying that she wanted to create her own content. Crystal wanted to create her own content. How did you even come up conceptualizing the idea of the food truck adventures? Uh, well I work primarily with my partner, my partner in everything, and uh, we wanted to go to the festival. The, well, there's a, Austin does a food truck festival where you get a badge and you get six days and you go to all the trucks and try the food. And we decided to just shoot it, why not? Because I like to make work fun, my life, I guess. I have no division there. <laughs> it's uh, fun to me to work, so. I, I wanted to do that and we did it and it was like, well, we actually have something we can work with here. Let's do something with it. I mean, that's how, it was a whim, really. <laughs> it worked out, but it was a whim. Yes. And yeah. the food was delicious. And, yeah, and also I like, I have a, I'm, I like to do things where I learn, I'm always learning, I'm sort of obsessed with learning, and I don't really know much about food at all. I can't cook to save my life, yeah. really, I burn, I burn water, it's horrible. Yeah. So I wanted to learn about food, and that's how I did it. <laughs> Wouldn't ate it. Just eat it. Crystal, can you tell us a little bit about what your experience has been, because I guess, what, five years ago was kind of early in the game with web series. Yeah, it's, um, uh, there were just, I want to say a handful, but I'm sure there were much more. It just wasn't really popular at the time. And, uh, uh, you know, I came off of a soap opera, and soaps have been dying over the last decade, maybe more. And um, getting older and just realizing, okay, I want to do something fun and interesting, too, because, you know, life comes, the changes happen in waves, and like uh, in technology. And uh, the internet was growing, YouTube had started and I was obsessed with it. Um, and I was in a storyline on a soap opera that was hugely popular as it was going off the air, which is kind of unusual. And it was uh, sad to see it end. And um, I, you know, again, I think you just kind of go, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I just called a friend and said, let's go do this, you know. And, and all the pieces just sort of fell into place because there were other people who were excited about it and the unknown, they weren't afraid of it, just they thought, well, let's do it and see what happens. And, um, and we got it made, you know? And uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of the story. And, and since then, I, there's been some interesting stuff happening and I, I think it might be kind of fun for other content creators that there's this whole wave that's happening out there where people are looking for content to put on their cable networks. And, um, you know, we've been approached, so there's, 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 you never say never, you know, the soap might be dying on broadcast, it might be coming back to life somewhere else in little pockets. But I just find the whole progression of things fascinating. That it's not, I love the web, I love the freedom of the web, I would stick to it, honestly. I'm not gonna turn down a, you know, somebody came and offered me money for a film, I'm not gonna turn that down, but, <laughs> You know, in terms of creative freedom, there's nothing like it, and you just never know where it'll, it'll end up. And that's really interesting, too, because we spoke, my uh, television show spoke with Liz earlier in the week, and that's something that you really touched on that was really neat, that you can write and conceptualize your own ideas for a portal, where you kind of have that free reign of creating content that most people, it, it's, it's a hard sell. Right. Okay. It's you, you, the but yeah, the content's a hard sell. Can you can you talk about having that the freedom for writing your own show doing sure. your own? I really like the microphone. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, uh, I think because we don't have any like other producers, um, and and there's no boss. You know what I mean? Like there there's uh, such a freedom in in writing whatever I want. And Portal is uh, sort of this dream logic. It's a choose your own ending. 
web series where you watch a video and then at the end of it you choose one direction to take and it you know takes you down different rabbit holes. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, in a normal form like a short film or a feature film, I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to give the audience that sort of interaction with with the content. Um, so web, you know, online web series kind of gave me this this opportunity to you know. Put, put the audience a little bit more in the driver's seat than just being passive watching a feature film or a short film or a series of short films. Um, so every time you watch it or whoever watches it, you know, it can be seen in different ways. And I, I wanted to, you know, make that a little more interactive and, and, um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't do that otherwise. <laughs> And Sheridan, this is something interesting. Talk a little bit about um, Austin Film Meet and what you, you must get tons of people in different, uh, you know, whether they be a director or a cinematographer or behind the camera, wh whatever. But how do you advise them when they take an idea of something probably wild, like if Liz had come up to you, right? How do you advise them and na to navigate their uh, ideas? Pretty much always go for it intelligently. <laughs> what does that mean? With education. So if you have absolutely no experience in the world directing or doing anything with film, don't go and be a director. Figure out what you're doing a little bit first and then go do it. But pretty much I'm always encouraging. I think it's important. I, was, I grew up in theater and I was surrounded by a lot of people who were very encouraging and I mean that's what you need is support around you. So. Pretty much that. And I'm honest. Honesty is important. So if somebody brings me something and they ask me what I think, I take into account their experience and then give them an honest opinion. You know, it doesn't help to have people just say, oh yeah, it's really, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Liz, so you, you know you came from Oklahoma. I don't know what the market is like in Oklahoma. But Austin still no yeah Austin still a secondary market so yeah. I'm curious to see what you and Crystal have to say about your experiences because you make it you make it what you you do with what you have right yeah Austin yeah. so yeah. have you seen a progression since the time that you've been here to now um I mean I've seen my experience has changed but I don't know if that's like a general thing for most people or for women. Um, I, I, I've noticed a lot of um, female roles that are like topless and nude or sex scenes and like those are those are the you know the last four auditions I had or, or it was called for they were all that and so I you know I'm at a point in my life where I don't really want to do that so like I turned you know these are big projects and it's kind of disappointing to like to, to know that there's you know stuff being made but but the roles for women aren't as complicated or challenging or complex, and it's just, you know, your body, essentially. Um, and I, when I moved here, you know, that's what I saw, and this last year, that's what I saw. So I'm not seeing any progression in terms of that, honestly, um, which, is, which is disappointing. But there's also not that many huge films coming through here either. Um, and, you know, so, so you do kind of have to, you know, make your own content for the things that you want to do. Um, you know, I wrote my own character for Portal because that's, that's a role that I wanted to do and I wasn't seeing it being done. Um, but, you know, and with like the tax cuts and, you know, there's like, there's issues with, with the film industry in Austin and I think everyone's aware of it. Um, and so that's disappointing too. But, but I also think that maybe that's kind of the kick in the ass we need to like make our own stuff and, you know, bring it back into it, it being about art and content and um, you know, meaningful work that, that you wouldn't normally do if it's just about money. You know, if it's if it's coming from your heart and, and it's coming from like, you know, you, something that you really want to communicate, it doesn't matter if there's money in it or not, you're just gonna do it. Um, so that's kind of what I learned over, you know, the past few years being in Austin. Crystal, do you wanna add to and uh, talk a little bit about the LA market in that way? In terms of web series, in terms, just... no. In terms of seeing, I guess, like the progression of why we, why you would want to create your own content in a specific way, like Liz creating her own characters that she would want to play. Because you have control over it. I don't think I. I think as an actress, um, I mean, you guys have heard the stories. Your Maggie Gyllenhaal is too young to play <laughs> opposite a fifty-five-year-old leading man because she's thirty-seven. She's so old. <laughs> And, um, you know, there just isn't a lot out there. 
there just isn't a lot out there, and that's just the way it is right now. So uh, the advantage to that is um, that's you know it's, it, the internet's going to be cheaper. It's going to be cheaper to, to and, and you've got so many really great DPs and camera people and um, people on their own equipment and their own lights, and they just want to be a, a part of a creative process. And um, so if you write your own characters, you can get them made, and with the internet, you can get some eyeballs on it. It's it's just a lack of um, opportunity. That's what is driving this. And there's something I noticed too is um, with what we do, women or men actually, as creatives, a lot of the problem I see is that people lack the entrepreneurial experience or the knowledge to see their mood, see their idea, idea go from idea to execution. Is that something that you you feel Liz is? Um, is an advantage that you have for having that um, entrepreneurial spirit about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I have like a little bit of it. I don't think I don't think I have the business smarts for it for sure. So I know that there's like, you know, I'm lacking some knowledge in in terms of like producing, you know, efficiently or you know, getting people on board or getting funding, you know. Um, but I do, but I do have like the like get up and go and like let's let's get something done or like let's make something. Um, so I feel like that's that's definitely pushed, you know. And, and and it really, I mean, it happened last year. I I started writing it about this time last year, so it's like pretty new. It's a little baby, <laughs> um, and and it happened because it was just like nothing was going on, nothing was happening, no opportunities, and it's like sometimes you have to be in a low place to like, to push yourself forward. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think sometimes it, life experience and opportunities, even when they seem sort of bad, are actually good for us to like, to, to make, you know, make our own opportunities and make things better for ourselves. And I, I, I think about this, how there's no panel men in, men in web, right? Yeah. It's not lost on me that there's not that here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what what can we say to that, right? About the, the disparities of women women doing I know having control in the industry. Um, Crystal, can you talk about that? About um, uh, perhaps stereotypes or what have you, or pushback that you probably have felt in the industry. Just generally speaking, as an actress, as a as a business person, um, it, we just are. Um, you know, I hate to say it. You know, I I'm raising two sons, and I'm trying to teach them that women are not second class citizens. But when you call the the unions, and they're telling you, you know, if you if you have mostly women on your crew, you get a discount because you're a minority. It's pretty shocking to hear. Um, I've been in this business for 25 years. I, I had no idea. I, was, I, I would have taken advantage of them a long time ago. Um, they, they don't tell you unless you ask. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's it's mm -hmm. just something that needs to change. I think that um, I know I'm not getting into politics. I think that um, with the internet and sticking with what we're talking about on the web, this opens up a lot of doors for very creative women. And um, it offers, a, like I said, the, the expense of it and the support of uh, women's groups and getting behind this. And there are, there are a lot of men in business. I, I'm in business with a lot of wonderful, wonderful guys who teach me something every single day. I, they're in the room and it's taken me a long time. It's like it's a different language and I'm in the boardroom going, you know, playing with my hair. You know, it's like, what is going on? So um, they, I've learned a lot, but it's definitely something that we, as a, as a sex, haven't had as much opportunity as, right? So it's, it's going to take some time to catch up, and the web is a great place to do that. Sharon, do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, it seems like there are certain positions that women get a chance at, and there are uh, others that we aren't thought of for. For example, um, if you are a girl and you try to grip, you will spend the first part of your day telling everyone, no, it's okay, I'll carry it. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I think also with tech, anything that's a tech position, um, people don't really, I don't think it's intentional, but they don't really think of women as understanding tech, and so they just don't think of you like, 
Um, I have friends that are female DPs, and they just aren't thought of. Like when they put the list, I don't think it's intentional. I, I think most of the difficulty is unintentional, but um, it's kind of the way it is, and we have to change it. Woohoo! Honestly. <laughs> For kicks, Liz. <laughs> um, well, my experience with um, with any sort of stereotypes have, has mostly just been in acting. Um, as a director, uh, my business partner is a man, and um, I, you know, have no, nothing but support from him. Um, and I've worked with really good actors that are really supportive and, and very respectful of me as as a director. Um, so I, I, I think a lot of the limitations are sometimes in our minds. I think we, there's a fear that, that like men won't accept us as director, you know, or as authority or anything like that. Um, yes, that's definitely like true in, in lots of cases. But I think the reason maybe some women don't step out and do, do something like that is because of the fear of that. And so, like, the more women that, like, kind of take charge of their careers and, and um, if, you know, if they want to be directors or anything like that, creators, um, you know, to not let that sort of fear or, or you know, the fear of, of being disrespected or anything like that, you know, stop them from doing it. Because there are, like, plenty of wonderful men that are super supportive of, of what I do, what we do, and um, we can't forget that, you know? No, and I and I think it's really inspiring too because women, it, it's really it's really daunting, right? We're kind of told this is where you belong, this is what you can do, what your options are. But to come up with something, that's what I think is um, is really speaking out to that. Where would where do you come up with your um, ideas? Where does that where does that come from? Dark places in my brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> where does my start come from? Um, Portal, yeah, Portal comes from like dreams and nightmares I've had, um, concepts or stories and ideas that have just kind of stuck with me because they've, they've made an, some sort of influence or impact just like, you know, they're arresting, their concepts or you know, scenarios that are arresting to me that I can't get rid of and, you know, it's almost therapy, you write it out <laughs> and so, you know, you, you make something good with it um, and so that's, that's where a lot of, um, a lot of my creativity has come from of just like kind of kind of darker places I mean if you watch portal like it's it's kind of kind of dark but but it's it's been my way of like of um, expressing and working through these sort of nightmares that I've had and, and these sort of things that I think we all you know go through and sort of the trauma of, of some of you know life experiences and and I think that's that's the healthiest way of, of dealing with it so can you tell me a little bit how uh, Venice came about? Because I've seen a few episodes, but I, I want to know a little bit more about the backstory. Um, well, I, I was doing the soap opera and, and this story, and it sort of um, took off uh, as we were going off the air. And, um, um, you know, it was a, an LGBT-themed uh, love story. Um, and it was just a love story. There was nothing, um, you know, uh, well, it's a soap opera, and they get really racy on a soap opera. We did nothing like that. It was the most wholesome story I've ever told in the 20 years I've been doing soaps. Um, but, you know, there was definitely this, this uh, they wouldn't let us even, you know, uh, kiss on the cheek. Um, and, you know, this is, uh, they were getting, uh, CBS was getting um, bomb threats. And, um, you know, it was, it was a big uh, hot button issue especially in 2000, 2009. Um, so we went off the air, unfortunately, and I took my leading lady, because I was a part of that story, and uh, I said, let's do this, because there was such an incredible outpouring from people all over the world. At that point, YouTube was up there, and people had never seen a soap opera before, and certainly not that one. And there was just this, this word getting out there, and we were on the cover of the New York Times Arts section and CNN International. And um, I thought, well, let's, I want to go to the web anyway. I didn't know where my next job was anyway. I didn't know what was going on. And, um, and it was a safe place to go because we could control it. And we didn't have people saying, no, you can't, you know, you can't touch your forehead, and, you know. You know, it was just, it was, so we took it there as, I, I did it more as a matter of principle. And a few <laughs> I'm doing this anyway. And um, you know, so 
and it just turned into something really, it was really, it's an important thing. It was important for me to get out there. It was an important message for me to get out there and continue that story. Shannon, you were telling me outside about even starting the Food Truck Adventures, right? Was that an accident or was that, was that planned for you? It was an accident, more or less. I mean, you know, we did go like, hey, let's shoot it. But that's because I like to turn a camera on and get in front of it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was really an accident. And then when it was done, I mean, I didn't know, honestly, I didn't know we'd make it through all of them because there's so many of them. And we didn't actually make it through all of them. We got 36 of the trucks out of 50-something trucks the first year. And that was really four days for us. So it's a lot of running around. You have no idea, and then shoving food in your mouth, and then running to the next one. And so, I mean, I didn't know how it was going to be. We just did it. I work. I really pretty much it's just me and my partner, and just the two of us. And we live together. We're we're together, and all the time, pretty much, we work side by side. So it was like a fun thing. So I guess yeah, it was totally an accident. <laughs> but normally that's not how it works for me. Usually I'm motivated by what interests me, and I research something and then find something that I just been like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, but the food trucks was an accident. Mm -hmm. It was a, a very delicious one. <laughs> and, and this year hasn't happened yet, right? Actually, this is, uh, well, the second season is rolling out right now, and that was this past October, um, covering that festival. And then the next one comes in, again, in October, and that'll be number three. <laughs> How, how is that going to be different from the last ones? Because I, I don't even know we have that here in town, truly. I mean, we have... Amazing. <laughs> it's so good. It would actually be my favorite, my favorite thing. It's really fun to like eat and try all this stuff. It's great. And there's no guilt because you're not like, well, what if I don't like this? Or, you know, you just get to try it. So um, how's it going to be different? It's going to be different because this time I'm going to try and have a, a guest. We had a couple of people, a couple of my friends came and ate with me. So there's a couple of episodes where I have someone we're eating together. And that worked really well. Um, and so we're going to do that, try to do it every time on all the trucks next time, have somebody come eat with me. It'll be crazy to do all those trucks in six days with another person there that we have to coordinate every time, but we're going to try it and see what happens. So, and we're also, um, one of the things that we, I regret that we didn't do is that we don't really have an arc to the whole thing. I mean, the arc is, do we make the trucks or not? But it's not very strong, realistically, um, it, because uh, honestly, it was an accident. We we wanted to eat and on camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, this uh, next year, I would like to have more of an arc and talk more to the truck owners and talk about their experiences to them a little bit more um, than just ooh yummy food. So I guess. Did I answer your question? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I watched you and I think it's really amazing because you were saying that you're not a foodie. No, not at all. No, I, I can't cook and I um, was kind of raised, my mom would do the menu thing where she'd look at the menu and she'd go, all right, we can, we can do this or this. Which of these two items would you like? And so I never really learned to read a menu and there's a lot of foods that I didn't, I don't know what that is. You know, we, my grandmother cooked out cans. So I don't, I don't know for a long time what food looks like. And so, I mean, this was a chance to explore something and see. And I, I know for the first few episodes what you get is, mmm, this is really good. Because I don't know what to say about it. I don't know how to talk about food. But by the second season, I think they're a lot better. I can actually describe food. I have words that work to help communicate it. It's, it's better. I mean, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to eat. <laughs> it's not ridiculous, but and Liz, you're on your your second season, yeah. right? Yeah. Of Portal, and it really is interesting how you're you have you've hired on a lot of our friends, mm -hmm. right? But what's that like? Because that's such a neat concept to Austin that she can do food trucks, but you can also pull from an amazing pull from an amazing pool of people of actors here in Austin. And that wasn't an accident for you, the, the people that you specifically chose. No, yeah, like? no, I mean, I, I, I was, when I moved, like, all my friends were just the people I met on set, so I just made friends with a ton of actors. So all my best friends are actors, and, and we all talked about not having enough work, and so it was sort of this very easy thing to do. Like, well, you know, I'll cast them for that. I know that they wanted to try this. Let's try that, you know? So I, I feel lucky that I get to, like, I've already seen them act. I'm in acting classes with, like, a lot of them. And, and um, so the casting process is 
super easy. <laughs> and there's, there, well, there's so many people, and like you know, like our our goal is to to be able to cast all, you know everyone that we that we've seen that we like that we're friends with, and you know find the right place for them in this in this world because it is sort of this like ongoing project. We don't we don't have an end game in sight, and it's not even really in seasons. It's just a continuation of, of the story. Um, so yeah, we're we're. We call it season two, but we're working on you know writing and on and, and finishing up that, and then we'll be filming this next year. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I, I feel super lucky to to know so many fantastic actors. Crystal, I was wondering what it must be like because I, I was I was very fortunate to uh, speak when Patricia Arquette came to South by Southwest, and she was speaking to the fact of what you said that times are changing. People are craving, craving content. So being in a primary market like, like LA, what's the shift like there? Is Are people kind of smarting up a little bit about where to take their own careers? Is that what you're seeing? Or is that, um, do you feel like you're just a little ahead of the curve, curve with everyone there? Um, I, I think LA is, LA, I think, it's, I think it is what it is. It's a, it's a wonderful, you know, template, um, you know, the, and the web is certainly changing and it's different. And if you look at the Netflixes and the, they don't divulge numbers. It's an interesting game because the numbers aren't gonna be anywhere near at this point what uh, you might see on a television show. Um, and we're just all gonna agree not to talk about it. Um, and that's fine, because it, it is a different climate, but things get stuck in people's heads. So there, there's, it's coming closer together, there's, but they're not together. The world of the web and the world of television are, are always, I think, going to be separate. I just think there'll, there'll be a very significant link between the two of them. So what would you say you, what do you want to see for the industry? Like what's a half crazy idea you would want to see in five years from now from the industry? Um, I'm going to be retired on a beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing the beach. Yeah, we're all going to be there. Um, no, I, I, I'd like to see uh, more women behind the camera. Um, I have some fantastic female writer friends who have had like the highest grossing romantic comedies ever and they can't get arrested. Uh, that's the business in general though. It's just the business in general. I think it's a little harder for chicks. Um, I just, I'd like to see more women uh, doing what they want to do and doing it independently. It's, it's what we do best. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to add to that, Sharon? Sure. I would like to see more diverse women represented. I, I don't mean racially, I mean like body types and interests. And I feel like if you're not a certain body type, it's really hard to get anything to happen. And that would be really nice to see all types of women represented. So. That's honestly what I would like. I have really high hopes for the web, bringing that out. So, like your your show, it's it's good. We need more of that. We need it to not be so unusual, and we need these voices represented. That's what I want. You know, that's actually really true. That's a really good point because I think that unfortunately that's how we get work, right? We're typecasted into certain things, and there's a you know that's uh, that's how we get jobs, but. Um, you're right, it's not just minority, but it's, we're almost pigeonholed for exactly what we look like, and that doesn't seem to happen with the men. 